professor Dr. Zhi Gaolin, Director, National Jiaotou University. Let's welcome Dr. Lin.
driven current. Yeah. So they're moving the sand around. And also there's a lot of industry construction going on coast and build the breakwater and the seawall up there. So it's completely changed the, the, the coastline. So that's that's explained most for the loss image we saw from Thailand. But the, the problem is the government they spend so much money, I don't know how many billions they put in the sea, try to build the water break year by year and more and more. And this year, I think the Thailand government and the Korean government is going to spend another, I think, more than 200 million yeah. to put all the country stuff in there. So that's something we have to face. So the third comment I was, I want to give it to uh, Zhong, Zhongyang University. I think Zhongyang University, in particular for the environmental study, you guys really need to get some um, um, course study, particularly for ecologists and uh, and biodiversity in the area that university is located. For example, in Taoyuan and in Xintu, there's a lot of problem of environmental uh, issue there. For example, that the, the, the LG reef in Guan, Guan Yin yeah. district. Yeah. I think there's a lot of basic study we need to collect information as a scientist. And we will to provide uh, the more uh, suggestions in the future. So that's my comment for the last talk. And, but I have one specific question for Naomi. I think you are living in a world where it's a lot of skeptical. But we in Taiwan, we are living in a world that is not skeptical. We accept everything. Okay, one thing is called plus minus two degree. Let's get everybody wake up and we have a climate changes in, in Taiwan. So I think we are dealing with, to me, it's, we are dealing with a very different issue in terms of response of society. So I want your opinion that how the, the, the society in Taiwan, okay, it's very contrary, contrary to Australia, contrary to the United States. Now you are facing a lot of challenges from the skeptical. Mm -hmm. And but is any of your um, recommendation for society like Taiwan? We are small. We accept everything, but we don't respond. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. So as the as the the, the, the uh, professor in the uh, the, the science the research, and what's your idea? What do you recommend for this kind of so tightly, actually, we accept everything. We are saying, okay, Taiwan are facing the climate change, see what the level is rising. But the problem is we don't. Hey, I'll give you a very interesting example. Like, um, in the course of time, Taiwan, as the, the seafood we saw on that image, there's a lot of seafood. But in that image, 80% of the import. Lobster there is a Mexico species. Mexico? Mexico is Mexican lobster. So the, the carbon the, the carbon footprint is be much higher than anything. <laughs> I can give you any percent of the image is all import. China, um, the, the, the lobster from the Mexico and the the big prawn, it come I think the big prawn it come from China and the crab come from uh, Indonesia. But the reason is we over fish is our cost of life as well. But the, the, the response for the future the fishery department say because this is due to the climate change, the seawater the sea water is uh, uh, temperature rising, and fish was swimming away. <laughs> okay, and the interesting part is the fishermen accept this. They, we are we did not do any harm to the sea. The overfishing, overfishing is not our responsibility because the climate changes. Mm, yeah. So the, this whole society just doesn't call the move. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I would like to hear your your um, sort of comment about this kind of. Uh, you know, different society and economy response in terms of the economic changes. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult question and... Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a very difficult question. Of course, I haven't... I've only been in Taiwan for three days now, so I'm not <laughs> in a position really to pass judgment, but what I could say is I think the strongest force in any culture is inertia. And that's something that seems to be almost a universal. People like to keep living the way they're living, and it takes effort to change. So like any culture, if you want to change people's way of operating, you have to create either positive or negative incentives, right? And so, you know, it's not clear to me what would be the best positive or negative incentives here, but I think that's the kind of thing you'd want to think about. And, Maybe you could have a follow-up workshop to think about the question of what what would be the right way to try to move Taiwan forward. 
we have the same problem with overfishing in the United States, as you know. And my, I don't know if you have seen her work, Carmel Finley was a graduate student of mine and has written a book about overfishing in the United States. And, you know, a very similar pattern where our version of that is that we blame overfishing on the tragedy of the commons. And we say it's because everybody, you know, was just doing their own thing, but we neglect the very conscious policies that the United States had to promote fishing, to subsidize fishing. Uh, after World War II, we sold fishing boats very cheaply. We heavily promoted fishing in Japan as part of Japanese reconstruction after World War II. So, you know, the overfishing on the part of the United States was part of a very, very conscious set of policies to promote fishing. And when people tried to say, there's a problem here, you know, nobody really wanted to hear that. And that's, I think, the other really big problem about almost every environmental issue. In a way, it's a bad news story. You know, there's all this horrible plastic. We're ruining the beautiful countryside. We're changing the climate. We're overfishing. Nuclear power doesn't work. Technology has failed us. So it's a kind of a negative message. And I think that that's hard for people. People don't like to hear black, bad news, and they often blame the messenger. So that's where it gets complicated. I think climate change is a particularly complicated issue that way because there's no getting around the fact that climate change is bad news. And if you try to pretend it isn't, I don't think people get it. They don't get the... You can't communicate the severity of the problem without talking about the potential for really bad things. And I think nuclear power is similar that way. Yet at the same time, if it's all bad news, nobody wants to hear it. And that's where I think the combination of the reality, the realism about what the scientific evidence tells us, but maybe coupled with some optimism about mechanisms that could work, like a carbon tax or emissions trading, or technological innovations like we heard about yesterday with the carbon capture and utilization. You know, maybe that kind of a combination. Enough bad news to make people realize we need to act, but enough good news to make people realize it's not completely hopeless. Or at least I hope it's not completely hopeless. But don't invite, invite Clive Hamilton if you... If you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, read his book and then you'll think it's completely hopeless. <laughs> Thank 可是事实上就是说你要反映到现实的政治结构事实上在上市的投票也是过半以上的人是投给那个废核的政党那个六月以后才会有一个行动国企的团体的专利是以普通的母亲